Do you swear or affirm your testimony about to give as a true set of that? I do. So you can put your hand down and could you state your name again for the record and spell your first and last name? Uh, my name is Jennifer Crumbly, J E N N I F E R C R U M B L E Y. Go ahead, Pastor. Thank you. Mrs. Crumbly, I'd like to talk to you about your vigilance as a parent. But before I do, I want to make sure that you understood the oath that you just took. I do. Okay, you understand that you took the stand under oath and you have to tell the truth? I do. You understand that was the rules yesterday as well? Correct. All right, we're going to come back to that. Now, you have been described by your attorney as a hyper-vigilant parent. Correct. Okay, do you agree with that? I do. In fact, you called yourself a helicopter parent before. Yes, I was. So you told us that you spent a lot of family time together. We did. Now, I'd like to talk to you about what your digital footprint shows. Okay. What the evidence on your phone shows. Okay. Now, it's true, you agree with me, that having horses is a pretty time-consuming hobby. It can be. Okay. It was for you. It can be. And that's what you said yesterday? Yes. Okay. And you were at the barn for between three and five times a week? Mm, more like three times a week. Three times a week yeah. for a couple hours of a trip? Correct. Okay. It's also an expensive hobby. It is. So your banking records show that in the year 2021, you spent over $20,000 on the horses. Is that great? Probably. Okay. And that's not including cash. That's just from Capital One and Flagstar Bank. Correct. In fact, you told a co-worker that half of your salary basically goes to the horses. I might have, yes. Now, except on rare occasion, you didn't bring your son with you to the barn. He was not into horses. I would ask every time I went to the barn, but he didn't want to go. So, so the answer was no? No. Okay. And at least as far as your horses being boarded with Kira Pennock from June of 2021 to November of 2021, mm -hmm. your son never went with you. Is that correct? Um, I think he went once when my in-laws were in town and we met them at the barn. Okay. But there was nothing stopping you from taking him. No, he just didn't want to go. Okay, it's, it's a family atmosphere. <clears throat> it can be. Okay, like the Halloween party that she had. That was for families. Yeah, most of the kids there are young. Okay. In the winters, you you were on ski patrol as well. Correct. Okay, and that, that can be a bit of a time-consuming hobby. It can be. All right, and you would be on ski patrol between one and two times a week? It's a total of ten hours a week. Ten hours a week. Okay, so how many days? Um, I did doubles on Saturday, so one day a week for me. So you told this jury yesterday, you depicted your affair with Mr. Malash as, as a um, one time a week meet up at a Costco parking lot. Is Correct. that your testimony? Correct. Okay. But it wasn't just that, was it? Nope. Okay. In fact, there are numerous photographs sent to Mr. Malash. Okay. Yes or no? I'm sure there was. Okay. Numerous messages exchanged with him. Correct. And it wasn't just during the week, Monday through Friday, was it? No. No. In fact, that's what you said yesterday. But in fact, it included trips. Um, there were actual business trips that he met me on. Okay. And it included other individuals. Yes. What's Adult Friend Finder? Um, it's where you can go on and meet people who meet certain tastes that you're looking for. This is 429. And you had the app, Adult Friend Finder, on your phone. I do not believe I had the app. My okay, phone. it was found on your phone. Okay, well, I guess it was on my phone. Okay, and there were messages from you to other individuals. <laughs> Correct. Your Honor, I would object that this is going outside of the scope of the affair with Brian, but I, mean, I don't think the court's ruling on opening the door was confined to just her extramarital affair with Brian Lunch. Well, I guess. Uh, with regard to Mr. Malash, uh, I determined that uh, the defense opened the door. I don't know that I determined that the defense opened the door as to other... Conditions. She depicted herself as having one extramarital affair for about a six-month period of time, where she met with him one time a week. That was her testimony yesterday. We have evidence to the contrary, and I think it's important. It's going to get exciting. I, All right. It is what it is. All right. Well, go ahead. But I'll, I, I won't delve too far. Okay. Yeah. I, into it, Judge. I really, this jury has been here a long time, and I respect their time, Judge. I'll be brief. You might have a question. So, 
Mrs. Crumbly, I'm sorry, this is not a laughing matter. Mrs. Crumbly, on Adult Friend Finder, we see messages from you in at least of August of 2021, August the 4th, 2021. Okay. Okay, and you don't dispute August the 10th of 2021? No. August the 11th of 2021? No. And more importantly, November 21st, 2021? No. Okay. And more important than that, November the 28th, 2021? No. Okay. You don't dispute that evidence was found on your phone? I don't dispute it. Okay. And you don't dispute that it wasn't just you and Mr. Malash meeting after work hours. It was with you and Mr. Malash arranging with under other individuals to meet after work as well? Um, no. I only met with Brian during work hours. The times that we were at the hotel, I was on business. We did arrange for other people to meet us there. So Sunday, November the 28th, you remember that day? Mm. It was the day after you took your son to the shooting range. I, I don't remember it. You don't remember that day? No. Two days before the high school attack? No, I don't remember what I did that day. Okay. Well, you were pretty specific in what you did on November the 27th with the firearm. You remember that? Well, correct. All right. Now, November the 28th, 2021, you spent your time arranging a meetup with somebody on Adult Friend Finder. I never met anybody on, with a, on Adult Friend Finder. Arranging a meetup. Oh, okay. I'm not just talking about the time that you spent physically with somebody. I'm talking about the time that you spent and devoted your energy to setting that up. Okay. And you will agree with me, it's not just the, the time period at the Costco parking lot or the time period at the hotel or the time period on the trip, correct? That's the only time I met with people. Right. But that's not the only time that you devoted your own personal time and energy and focus to that, is it? I guess I don't understand what you're asking. Okay. Well, these, these meetups didn't just happen by the, themselves. You had to set them up. Correct. You weren't driven there. You weren't dropped off there. You set them up with somebody else. Correct. And that took your time and your energy and your focus to do so. I don't believe it took too much time and energy, no. Now, you told this jury that when your son texted you that he was seeing demons and bowls flying off the shelves, that was in the spring of 2007, 2021. You recall that evidence, right? Correct. You don't dispute that that was on your phone? No. You don't dispute that at some point you read those messages? No. And you don't dispute that your son said at least one time, can you please text me back? Correct. Um, you, don't dis you don't dispute that when you're at the barn, you, your other messages show that you can take pictures, send pictures, and receive pictures. Usually I'm at the barn. If I take pictures and I try to send them, they don't go through right away, or I won't send them until I hit a spot where I actually have service. So in Exhibit 423, the Facebook message chat between you and James, the chat that you deleted, there are a number of pictures that James sent to you from the barn of a horse in a conversation about that particular horse. Do okay. you dispute that? No. Okay. And in fact, dozens and dozens of pictures of the like. I'm you, sure, yes. You're sure, okay. And those pictures were sent to you with a timestamp on that Facebook message chat. Okay. Do you dispute that? No. No. Okay. And then you responded in that same time frame. Do you dispute that? No. No. So that conversation with that picture that was taken at the barn was occurring while one of you were at the barn. I'm sure it was. Okay. Now, you don't deny that your son wrote in his journal that he asked his parents for help. You don't deny that evidence that was admitted? No, I don't. Okay. And you don't deny that he wrote in his journal that he now had access to the six-hour, nine-millimeter handgun? I do not deny that. And you don't deny that the six-hour, nine-millimeter handgun was, in fact, the murder weapon? I don't deny that. And you also don't deny that that gun was gifted by you and your husband to your son on November the 26th. Describe gifted. How about when you posted on Instagram his new Christmas gift? Correct. And I explained yesterday that it was for him to use at the shooting range. We didn't just hand him a gun as a here you go son. It was something he could use when we went to the range as a family together. You don't deny that in April of 2021, you described your son as being depressed. I didn't describe him as being depressed. I noticed that he was acting depressed. You used the word depressed. Yes, I, he was acting sad. Okay. He was acting depressed. Okay. And you know what depressed means? It means a lot of different things. Well, to you, it meant depressed, and you wrote that. Right. You don't deny in April of 2021, the evidence shows that your son told his only friend 
that he had asked you for help. No, I don't deny that. Okay. And you also don't deny that he told his only friend that you laughed at him. I do not deny that. Now, yesterday you told us that you took those messages in the spring of 2021, which, by the way, is at the same time you started your affair with Mr. Malash? Around that time. Okay. So, in the spring of 2021, when you uh, sent those messages, or when you received those messages, you indicated it was messing around. It was. It was messing around. In your mind, messing around. That's what your testimony was. Yes. Okay. Even when he said, can you please text me back? I didn't see his text message, so I didn't text him back. Even when your phone logs show missed calls? Can you ask that again? Even when your phone logs show missed calls from your son in that time period? Uh, no. Now, you said yesterday about these messing around texts. You agree with me that there's no indication in any text message either between you and your son, or any Facebook message between you and your husband, in any of those exhibits, in fact, anywhere on your phone, that indicated that any of those messages were a joke? No, there weren't. There weren't. And we're talking about hundreds of messages between <coughs> you and your son, and thousands of messages between you and your husband. Correct. And you don't deny that you never once Never once took him to see a therapist or counselor. No, I did not. You did not. Now you testified that, actually Mr. Moss testified, um, that you would meet during work hours, and we've established that it wasn't just confined to work hours, but you were permitted to leave as you please. Correct. Okay. And your boss actually testified that no problem if we needed time off. Correct. If you had a family issue, no problem, you can go. Correct. If you were sick, no problem, stay home. Correct. Okay? Um, in fact, you could work from home as an, on an as-needed basis. Correct. In fact, on November the 30th, you didn't even ask your boss if you could leave. You just told him you were leaving. Correct. And you told him when you were coming back. Correct. And you told him when you were coming back after receiving a phone call from the school asking for an immediate meeting. Correct. Because that was at, what, 10.05 a.m.? Around that. Okay. Now, had you ever been called... Can you have the TV on, please, Mr. Blaine? Had you ever been called... Yeah, it, it takes some time for all three of them. Sure, good. I have a few more questions I can ask before we get to these. Okay, go ahead. Have you ever been called to the school on an immediate basis before? No. Have you ever been told that your son had suicidal ideation before? I was never told he had suicidal ideation before. Okay, that's your testimony. But you've never been called to the school once for a meeting, I need to see you now. No. Correct? Correct. Okay. So even before you had made it to the school, you had told your boss when you were coming back. Correct. So you could already put a limit on that meeting. Not necessarily. Well, you said, I'll be back in about an hour. Okay. Right? That's right. your words. That's about an hour. Okay, those were your words. Correct. This is Exhibit 74. Do you see it? No, she doesn't. Oh. It's, it's not on here. That's. Yeah, it takes a minute. Right. Is it? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. This was sent to you. So Sean Hawkins called you at 924 in the morning, correct? That's correct. Okay. You called him back at 927. Correct. You had a five minute phone call. Correct. And then in that phone call, he texted you the picture with, with it was drawn out. Then he emailed you this original picture. Yeah. He texted me the modified one and then later um, emailed me this one. Later is at 932. Yeah. Like okay. after I asked him for it. You looked at it. I did. Okay. You told us yesterday you found it, I think your quote was, a little concerning. What struck you about this? Originally, um, when I saw the modified one, I was kind of angry at my son because we just talked about his missing assignments in geometry and his E the night before. Um, then when I got this one and opened it, it was concerning. Um, I honestly thought the, the guy on there was a poor drawing of Batman, the way the thing in the cat. I thought it was a cape. I didn't know. You thought that was a cape? I did. I didn't okay. look at that closely. What did you think of the gun? I thought it was a gun. 
Yeah. What about the fact that it is identical to the gun that you got him for Christmas a couple days before? I mean, honestly, it just looks like, a, looks like a gun to me. I didn't even notice. Well, you took a picture of the gun. You posted it on Instagram. You know what it looks like. I do, but I didn't analyze it. You saw Sergeant or uh, Special Agent Brandon's testimony. He described how it's identical. And you told us yesterday how your son was a good drawer. He's a very good drawer. Okay. What about the thoughts won't stop help me? Did that ring out to you? Yes, that was what was concerning to me. Blood everywhere, and there's a bullet. And actually, you were the one who bought the bullets on November the 27th. Correct. You later came to learn that those bullets were used in the shooting. I did. Okay. So you said yesterday it was a little concerning. Yet, you told your husband, emergency in all caps. Correct. That's why I left to go to the school, and, and I said, texted him. And he wrote back, my God, WTF. Correct. And then you told him he was distraught about last night. Correct. Distraught's an intentional word you chose. Correct. It's not sad. It's not a little anxious about school or his future. It's not talking about a video game. Distraught has a meaning. Correct. And you chose that word to send to him. Correct. So you went to that meeting. And this was November the 30th of 2021. And at that point, you'll agree with me that you knew prior to that day, the November 26th purchase day, that your son was wanting to get a 9 millimeter. That's what I, you said yesterday. Yes, I knew that they were talking about getting one because they okay. had rented it in the past. And, not, and, and you knew that he had shot one in the past. Yeah. Okay, and you knew that a 9mm is significantly more powerful than a 22. I did not know that until I actually shot it. Okay, well, your dad took your son with James to the shooting range when they visited in July of 2021. Correct. And they talked about how powerful the 9mm was because they rented one then. Okay. I don't, know if yes I, was, no. I don't know if I was part of that conversation, but if it was, it didn't register to me. It didn't register. Okay. You knew at the November 30, 2021 date that your son's friend had been taken without notice to your son. Incorrect. You say, I'm sorry, incorrect or correct? I said correct. Correct. And you knew that when his, your son's friend was taken, your son was extremely upset. He was upset, yes. He didn't go to school for a few days. I don't remember that. Okay. Well, if the school records show that he was absent for a few days after that, would you deny that? I wouldn't. Okay. And would you deny that he missed school because he was so upset? I don't know if he missed school because he was so upset or maybe he was sick. I don't know. Okay. Now, you told us yesterday and you acknowledged that that individual, that child, was like a second son to you. Correct. So he was the only one that your son hung out with? Outside of school, correct. Okay. Well, who did he hang out with inside the school? Um, he named he named some names to me. I'd, I've never met them before, but he told me some group of kids that he sits and eats lunch with and he talks to in class. Did he ever visit their houses? No. Did they ever visit your house? No. The only other peer to visit your house was this student who left the state around Halloween 2021. At that time, correct. We're talking about that time in October, in September, in at least August, July, June, May, all of, of 2021. 2021, correct. 2021, thank you. Now, he left on Halloween, and you knew that your son was planning to hang out with him on Halloween. Yes. Okay. But his friend didn't show. Um, we had texted, I had texted um, his friend's mom the day before trying to confirm if he was still coming over. And that's when we found out that he was driven to Wisconsin and taken to that school. Okay, so you're telling us you found out the day before Halloween? Yeah. Okay. But that didn't stop you and James from going to a Halloween party at the barn. Um, I don't believe it was on Halloween. Oh, well, that's what Kira testified it was, to. It was the Friday before Halloween. If there was a picture with a date stamp on it, would you deny it? No. Okay. And it didn't stop you from after you left that party without your son, you went to another Halloween party. We did. And your son was home alone at that point? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you talked to us a little bit about your son's hobbies in 2021. But in November of 2021, so we'll start with November the 1st, 2021. You know that those hobbies were non-existent. And I'll go one by one. Okay. So you told us about bowling. Correct. Bowling wasn't, the team wasn't in session at that point in time, was No, it? I think actually at that time he decided he didn't want to do bowling that year. Okay, so he stopped bowling the he sophomore did. year. He did. And it wouldn't have been bowling season anyway. I guess not, no. So one, one hobby you talked about yesterday 
that was an exist that was not in existence in November 2021. Correct, but we did still go to the bowling alley with him. Okay. And you said that he worked, but would you be surprised to learn that he only worked a few shifts post COVID? No, I'm not surprised at all. Okay. So he wasn't at work every day? No, he worked um, Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes Saturday mornings. Okay. But not very often. No, not very often. A handful of shifts post COVID, which of course March 2020 is when things shut down. He was working on a weekly basis. And you knew that he didn't have any friends? That's not the right way to put it. I knew he had friends, but no, he did not have many friends. You had never met another peer his age who he refers to as a friend. He actually had friends that used to come over prior to 2021 that he was still in contact we with. We went through defense exhibits yesterday from 2019 to 2020. I'm talking about 2021, at least from the time period where he sent you a message that he saw demons in the house. Right. In 2021, the only friend that came to our house was the one that's on that was right. on the thing. So you knew to be true in November of 2021 that he had no peer support. I don't know what he had in school. He had told me he had friends in school that he talks to. Okay. You, ever, you never met him? Though. No. Okay. And he didn't have any clubs at school he was a part of? Um, no, not that year. So you told us yesterday that your son wanted to design video games. Correct. Okay. Uh, he wasn't in a robotics club or a coding club at the high school. He did take a coding class prior to 2021, and he was in a robotics um, after school activity in middle school. Talking about in 2021. I'm just telling you, he's been in that before. Yeah. Now, despite what you have called yourself as a vigilant parent and a helicopter mom, you never decided in at least November of 2021 to look at his phone. No. No. Okay. Um, that's despite what happened in the spring of 2021. <clears throat> Right? What happened in the spring of 2021 did not concern me. Okay. okay. Now, the one thing that seemed consistent with your son, to you at least, is his desire to obtain a weapon. Is that right? I don't, I wouldn't say that, no. He had a consistent desire to obtain a weapon. Not to me, he did not. Okay. You didn't know about the 9mm? Oh, I, I knew about it. Okay. You didn't know about the 22s? I knew about them. And in fact, you posted on Instagram that he got himself a 22. Correct. In June of 2021. Correct. And from that time up until the November 26, 21 purchase, he was wanting to get a 9mm. I know him and my husband had discussed getting a 9mm. I'm not part of those conversations. But you knew about it. I knew, but not that it was. he was so, however you described it. He I said he consistently had a desire to obtain a weapon. I know that. I know they consistently talked about it, correct. Okay. They didn't just talk about this is a gun. You talked about how he wanted the gun. You don't deny that. Oh, no. In November 26, you said you weren't there for the gun purchase. No, it's not. Okay. But... Are you telling us you didn't know it was going to happen? I did not know they were going to the gun store that day, no. Okay. But you knew that you were going to um, eventually get him a 9 millimeter. No, I did not know that. Okay, so you're telling us that that was a surprise purchase to you? It was surprised to me that they went to the gun store that day. Okay. It was not surprising to me that they purchased a gun that day. And it didn't upset you that they bought a gun? Not, no, it did not. It upset you that they cut into your Christmas tree shopping time, but it didn't upset you that they bought a gun? Correct. And you told us that it was, in your words, James's responsibility to take care of that gun. Correct. Okay. Now, you don't deny that, at least according to the cell phone evidence, the photographic and video evidence, you're the last adult to have possession of that gun. Correct. Okay. Um, you were with him at the range on November the 27th. Correct. You saw he, your son shoot the weapon. Correct. You saw him shoot the last practice round before the shooting on November 30th. At the range? Yeah. Yes, correct. You saw how he stood? Honestly, that didn't mean anything to me at that time until this whole case came about, and I've learned what a shooter's stance is. So. He knew how to use the gun? Yes, he did. Okay. He's used one before. In fact, he showed you how to use the gun? Correct. Okay. And the stance he took, you saw from the Oxford High School video, was the same. You saw that, right? I don't, I don't know. I, I can't compare it. I don't know. Right. Um, but you entrusted this responsibility. Will you agree with me that owning a firearm involves a great deal of responsibility and trust? I do. Okay. 
and you entrusted this responsibility to your husband, James. I did. If you look at Exhibit 423, that's the Facebook chat thread between you and your husband, it's pretty clear you didn't trust James with much. Would you agree or disagree? Depends on what you're talking about. Okay. Well, you didn't trust him to get out of bed on time. Correct. You didn't trust him to cut the grass when it was time to cut the grass. He would cut the grass when it got to a length I didn't like. I didn't trust him. You didn't trust him to update you on his whereabouts. There's a reason behind that. You didn't trust him to not turn off or turn on the ring camera in your home. Correct. You didn't trust him to keep track of your son. Oh, I trusted him to keep track of my son. In those messages that we'll see in Exhibit 423, asking him, where is your son, over and over and over again, does that signify trust or distrust to you? That was when my son was walking home from school. Not that I did not trust my husband with my son. Okay. And you didn't really trust your husband to hold down a job. It's not that I didn't trust him to hold on the job. He had a hard time holding down one after COVID. Okay. And in those messages, you are constantly asking him about work, how much money he's making, and what he's doing to obtain employment. Correct. Okay. But this is the person you entrusted with a deadly weapon. I did. Why did you buy the Patriot Defense Runs? What are the, oh, those are the, that's the ammo? Uh, that was what the ones my son told me to purchase. I didn't know anything about it. I'd asked him, and he told me to purchase them. So you told us, you told the jury yesterday, I think you repeated it again today, that the gift was for target shooting only. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you bought 100 rounds of ammunition. Correct. And you only shot 50 while you were there. Correct. Okay. And those 50, at least according to some statements you made throughout the investigation, you put some on. Oh, the, the box of them? Yes, I did. I hid them. Now, on November the 27th, when you came home, you posted pictures of the gun and targets to your Instagram account. Correct. And then, according to the location data, your location data, you left. I think that's when we went... Well, I don't know. I must have, yeah. Okay. Well, you don't deny that. I, I don't deny okay. it. And, and your husband, James, was gone all day, according to his location data. I think so, yeah. Okay. And you saw in the evidence that... Um, in the picture you posted, there's an ATF pamphlet on handgun safety for children. Correct. Did you read that? I looked, up, looked it over, correct. Well, on Exhibit 74 here, I want to get back to this meeting for a minute. Exhibit 74, you don't deny that you could have left work for the day. No, I don't deny that. Okay. And you don't deny that you didn't tell the school officials, Mr. Hopkins and EJAC, about the gun purchase on the 26th? No, we had stated that we went to the shooting range, with my, I went to the shooting range with my son on Saturday. You didn't tell them that you had gotten him that Christmas gift? I didn't think it was relevant, no. You acknowledge that you never told Mr. Hopkins and EJAC that it wasn't just a friend, but it was the only peer that you had ever met and left. I college. probably said his best friend. You acknowledge that you didn't go home to look for that firearm after the meeting at the school? We wouldn't have a reason to. So that the answer is that you acknowledge that? No, I acknowledge that. Okay. And you acknowledge that you had already made plans for the night to go to the barn? Yes, I do. Okay. And you acknowledge that you had the time to stop at your house before you went back to work? I would have, but I didn't have a reason to. Now, you had told us that you had never taken your son to any sort of mental health professional. No. Okay. But you know how to obtain that help. Correct. In fact, you have prescriptions related to that. I do. So it's not that you didn't know who to call or how to call. You didn't. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yesterday, you talked a little bit about how you express emotion. Correct. And in fact, and the counsel asked you about your nerves when you testified. <clears throat> But you can, you can, you're capable of emotion. Yes, I am. Right? Okay. Um, and in fact, you had some explosive emotional fights with your husband. What we did. Um, and that was in the home that you shared. Correct. Okay. And with your son. Correct. We saw pictures of that home. Correct. 
And you told us that your son was at an age where he wouldn't text you back, I love you. It wasn't a text me back, I love you. It's like in passing, like, hey, Ethan, good night, I love you. Well, yesterday you told us that your son was at the age where he wouldn't text you back, I love you. That's, that was well, a that, words yesterday. Yeah, but more okay. or less, like, just saying it in passing. He, yeah. didn't, he, he wouldn't say it back. I'd say, good night, Ethan, love you, and he'd say, good night. Okay. Uh, for him to text me that he loved me was abnormal. Abnormal. Correct. Okay. But you didn't respond to that text until 44 minutes later? No, I was in a meeting at work. Okay. And um, if you go through your entire face, your entire text message thread between you two, the word love pops up how many times do you think? Between me and my son? Yeah. I have no idea. Okay. Um, three. <coughs> okay. The first is a reference to the game chess about a year before. Okay. And the other two times are right before your son committed this act and after the shooting when you responded. Does that surprise you? No. Robert, um, I would just ask if there could be a foundation for the dates of those texts because I feel like we got just a few texts. Okay, well, I think he, I think he specified, did you specify the date? I, I did, Judge. Two, two of the times were um, before and after the shooting and the other time was, was, was like About a year prior. I could pull the data if the council would like it. And I'm also wondering if what the data he's relying on is coming from Jennifer's phone where she deletes all their texts or if it's coming from the shooter's phone. Because the prosecution's asking questions, I just don't know the foundation. Oh, sure. Let me clear that one up. Um, it's from your son's phone. So there, all the messages would be contained there. You don't deny that that information would be accurate? No, I don't deny it. Okay. Now, what time you told us that he, well, she said he, he asked if the chess one was here earlier, and the um, other two were um, close in time the shooting. The day of the shooting. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm he, asking those me. have been admitted in evidence. Do we know? Wait, what's the question? Okay, but he's asking about the text overall, which have not been admitted into evidence, and I don't know that the text chain has all the texts. There is no foundation that what Mr. Keese is looking Judge, at. Judge, in cross examination, if the he's asked if that, is that wrong, would you would you argue with that? That's what he's asking. He's asking. I mean, there are people. I know she's just, she just doesn't know what. Hold on, counsel can't okay. testify. Okay. No, she can't okay. testify. But I, you know, there are people that end every conversation with all of you. Yeah, right? I would that. Okay, so and there are people who that, right? So he he is asking what's normal for them, and would she be surprised? That how many times they appear? Yeah, I'm just asking. I I get that, and I get that it's not common. I'm just asking. So what this period, is argument. I'm just asking what period of text okay. this is like, from. Well, you, you have redirect. Okay. Well, right. she doesn't know what he's even basing these questions on. This how, okay. Well, it is inappropriate for counsel to okay, suggest to the court what she or does, doesn't does not know. She can say I don't know. Okay. She can she can also say I don't understand the question. Okay. She can say that too. If you don't, if you, Mrs. Cumber, if you don't understand the question, yes, Mr. Pete, to clarify it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Judge. Now, yesterday, Mrs. Cumber, you talked about going to planning mode. Yes. Okay. Um, and that was in reference to counsel asking you about emotions and how you express emotions. Correct. All right. So, I want to talk to you about your planning mode and your priorities from the time that you were arrested. Okay. Now. Your, your phone calls were recorded from the time that you were arrested until now. Do you Correct. know that? You yeah, know that, right? I knew that. You know that, okay. And your priority on your first phone call, December the 4th of 2021, was on your animals and the cash recovered from the art studio. Do you deny that? I don't deny it. No. Do, you, do you deny that it wasn't until 10 days later and 14 calls later that you even mentioned your son? I was. Do you uh, deny it or not? I don't, but I was under the impression that I couldn't mention him because I could get flagged at the jail. Well, you mentioned him in later conversations. I did. Okay. And in fact, in one, a year later, March 25th of 2023, you said he just needs to man up. Do you recall that? I do not. Okay. Do you not deny that you said it? It sounds like something I would say. In December of 2021, your concern was about a GoFundMe. Do you remember that? No, I do not. I'm going to play this for you. 
Ms. Williams, can you have the volume up, please? Is this submitted as an exhibit? This is impeachment, Judge. Very nice. I, I did, yes. You were concerned about other things related to yourself around that time, weren't you? Um, is yeah. this still planning mode? I believe so. Okay. And you were arrested December the 4th. This is going to be December the 22nd. Text to statements you made to the police on November the 30th, 2021. Right? That's that's the context you use the words planning mode in relation to. Correct. Okay. So you told us that your the last phone call on December 31st, that was still you in, in planning mode. I want to make sure we can accurate an depiction of what that is. Now here's one from January 15th, 2022. No, 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 it's not, it's not an issue of that, it's an issue of, uh, you know, that, that bank seemed to be always, they had issues with their online stuff, and they had issues with, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff. I don't know, how can they bank on these people, you know, it's like, you know, so. But, and this is about uh, that child, that, that child deposit bank? So what? Am I still going to get a deposit of $300? That child thing the government does? You know, I have, you know, I have, a, I just got, I just got, because uh, I, I lost access. For some reason, I'm not the to that. Yeah. I had access, well, I had access basically to view only, and I was hard to see everything on there, but then also I lost access, and then it took me, I lost access like a couple of days before Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Is that still planning mode? Uh, we were talking about filing my taxes, if you played the whole thing. You were asking about your child tax Correct. credit, if you're still going to get that $300. My dad, my dad was doing my income taxes for me. Now, <clears throat> when we started, we confirmed that you understood the oath that you just took. Correct. And the same oath you took yesterday. Correct. Okay. And uh, you don't deny that you had $6,000 in cash in your purse the night you were arrested? No. You don't deny that your purse with the cash and four cell phones were in a plastic tote? Correct. You don't deny that that plastic tote was contained in a different plastic tote? Correct. 
You don't deny that your backpack with clothing items was found in a different plastic tote in a different area of that studio. Correct. Okay. And um, you don't deny that you knew you had been charged with involuntary manslaughter. Correct. In fact, as early as December the 1st, 2021 at 6, 10 p.m., you were talking about how you were being charged with involuntary manslaughter. You that know? was what I was being told by a family that was texting me. That's what the charges might be announced as, correct? Okay, and uh, one is to Mr. Malash. There's a text to your cousin um, about you are being charged with involuntary manslaughter. You don't deny receiving that. No, I don't. That's Wednesday, December the 1st. Correct. Right? Um, and you sent your neighbor a message on Wednesday the 1st of 2021, 6.55 p.m., that you are, were reading, they may charge us. Correct. Okay. And December the 2nd, 2021, you wrote, they're saying involuntary manslaughter. Correct. Right. You don't deny that? No. And, of course, you looked at different news articles about that uh, the next day. Yeah. And later on that day. Um, and then... You texted, after all of these messages and news articles, on uh, December the 2nd, 2021 at 2 p.m., we're fucked. You wrote that to Mr. Malash. Correct. Okay. And then you wrote uh, announcing charges at noon on December the 3rd, 2021 at 8.17 a.m. Correct. And you wrote that to Mr. Malash, you wrote that to Kira, you wrote that to your dad, right? Correct. Okay. So you don't deny any of that? No. Okay. Now you told us yesterday that you popped four Xanax? I did. Okay. And your husband popped four Xanax? Correct. You said you went to bed about 11 o'clock? It was around that time. Okay. And um, the evidence that we have admitted showed that you set your alarm for 6.30 a.m. and 6.45 a.m. I don't know if it was me who set it, but it was set for that time. Okay. And from the evidence, it shows when it was set, too. Correct. Okay. And it was set a little after 11 p.m. Okay, correct. Yes? Okay. So, yesterday you said, I want to say it was after 11 about going to bed. I want to say it was after 11, maybe around 11 o'clock, when we finally went to bed. We both, I prescribed Xanax for anxiety, and we each took four because we knew we were going to turn ourselves in the next day. And we hadn't slept in four days, and we just wanted to sleep. The question was, okay, so you just took four? Your answer, we did. And the next question was, okay, so the next thing, um, the next piece of evidence we saw that was coming in that art studio, do you recall that? Your answer, I recall my husband screaming, there's people with guns against interface officers. Question, what were you doing prior to hearing your husband screaming? Answer, we were sleeping. Question, okay, were you aware that there was anything going on? Answer, I was not. Correct. That's your testimony? Correct. Okay. And you know when you say something that isn't true, it's called a lie? Correct. Okay. This is going to be Exhibit 430. Council does have a copy. Is it? The entire thread. Perfect. No judgment. Oh, thank you. Judge, does the court have a copy? Is this today's? Yes, Judge. Okay. <coughs> um, any objection? No. Okay. Mrs. Crumbly, you knew the police were there. We're going to be submitted. Thank you, Judge. Not until I woke up, no. Not until you woke up. Correct. Okay. Now, we heard testimony yesterday, or throughout the trial, that 911 was called at 1043 p.m. You recall that? Uh, yeah, I saw on the video. Correct. Okay, and on the video... The first officers arrived before 11 p.m. Correct. Okay. And either you or your husband, we couldn't tell from the video, but you tell me, was it you or your husband out there smoking? That was my husband. Okay. So your husband walks in shortly after the 911 caller walks in the building to call 911. Correct. That was on the video. Correct. Okay. And officers arrived. And then we've heard testimony from Mr. Kirtley, who had a studio there. We heard testimony from Sergeant Henrik, who was in the Fugitive Apprehension Team as well as Corporal Shaw with the Detroit Police SWAT team about the amount of officers there. Correct. you recall that? I do. And you recall hearing the testimony that 
Corporal Shaw's team, their SWAT team, they actually used a 35 pound steel ram to bash in a door at the studio next to where you were at. You recall that testimony? I do. Okay. And your testimony was that you were asleep when the officers arrived? Yes, I was. Okay. But you had an alarm set for 6.30 in the morning on your phone, and that phone was found powered off, hidden in a tote, contained in a different tote, in a place away from the bed. Correct. You don't deny that? No. All right. And there are certain messages in 4.30. I'm going to go through them with you. <coughs> this is actually to your attorneys. At the time, you had two attorneys. Marielle, this is Jennifer's phone. James and Jennifer are using Jennifer's phone now. That's it. December the 3rd, 2021, 6.04 p.m. Do you recall that? I don't, but I don't, I don't deny don't, it. Okay, you don't deny no. it. Okay. Your next message, the other phone broke. That's December the 3rd, 2021, 6.04 p.m. The response was, when you can, we would like for you to call us. That was from either... Ms. Smith, or at the time, co-counsel, Mary Elaine. Correct. Your response, I'm sorry, this is from Mary Elaine. Thank you, Shannon is calling you both shortly. At the top it says to and from. I'll make sure I'm, I'm, I identify for the record. From Shannon, Mary Elaine and I are going to come get you guys in the morning. We do not think it will help to make a statement that you're coming back now, or that it will be tomorrow a.m. We can say that we told everyone you were coming back, and as of tomorrow a.m., you were back. That's Friday, December 3rd, 2021, 7.02 p.m. Correct. Right? Okay. So that's, that's after James had already moved the car around and backed into the parking spot. I believe so. All right. From Shannon, we can show them that everything we said was going to happen did happen. That's Friday, December 3rd, 2021, 7.02 p.m. Right? Right. Your response, okay, that's at 7.03 p.m. From Shannon, I'm going to drive home from my office right now and call you guys in about 40 to 45 minutes so I can get all the bond factor information written down for Mary Ellen and me. That's Friday, December 3rd at 7.36 p.m. Correct. Okay. Your response, okay, we'll be waiting, 7.37 p.m. Shannon, I'm going to call in one minute. That's at 8.54 p.m. that Friday night. Your response was okay. Do you recall? I don't, but I don't deny it. But you don't dispute the records? Correct. The next message you send was, think we might have found, don't know, just heads up, please check. December the 3rd, 2021, 11.14 p.m. That was written, but I do not believe it was written by me. Okay, you don't remember. Well, you just, you told us you don't remember any of these text messages. You just right, I read, I read through it, but... Um, you don't deny that this was on your phone, what we refer to as the burner or track phone. Correct. We were, both, we were both using that phone at the time because my husband's broke. Okay. Um, and then you wrote in quick succession, don't know, 11.16 p.m. We might have been found, 11.16 p.m. Laying low, 11.16 p.m. You don't deny that these are the records? No, I don't. Okay. Response from Shannon, oh shit, Friday, December 3rd. 2021, 11.16 p.m. Now, we know from all of the objective evidence, the testimony, the video, everything that the officers testified to, they were on scene before 11 p.m. You don't deny that? No, I don't. You don't deny that there were hundreds of officers on scene? I don't know how many were on scene. Okay. How many did you see when you got pulled out of the art studio? Honestly, I don't know. It all happened so fast. I knew there was more. There was a few. There was more than a few, but not You saw the body camera footage. Right. Okay. I do want to make a, a point so everyone's aware. This exhibit was just made admissible this morning. Correct. Okay. So we actually just received it this morning, and when you testified yesterday, you didn't know this exhibit was going to come into evidence. Correct. Okay. I want to talk to you now about the night before the shooting. Okay. November the 29th, 2021. You had testified that you got into a fight about grades with your son. Correct. Okay. Is that because you checked power school? Yes. Okay. During that fight, did you lock your son out of the house? We did not. You don't deny that he was outside of the house? He did, he did walk out of the house. He was upset. Okay. You told us that you took his phone. We did. 
That's not true, is it? That is true. We On took, we took November the 29th, 2021, your son filmed a 19-minute video while he was outside describing what he was going to do the next day. What time was that taken? 10 o'clock. I don't know if he got it back. I know we took um, the shooting range away and we took his gun away, so I don't know if he got it back. Okay. Now, all of the times that you were at the barn, there was nothing stopping you other than you told us he didn't want to go. Right? Correct. There's nothing stopping you on November yeah. November the 30th, 2021, from taking him home. Correct. Nothing stopping you. You know, actually, I want to go back to what you just said. You took his gun away. We took the shooting range away. You said he took, you took his gun away. No, I said we took the shooting range away. Your son could have been with you those three, four, five times a week when you were at the bar. He could have, yes. Your son could have been with you on those times when you were with either Mr. Malash or somebody else. Mm, no. In the week, the week, the weeknights, he could have been with you after school, after work. I wasn't with Mr. Malash at those times. Okay, the other individuals then. I wasn't with them either at those well, times. According to the I, I, finder, might have, I might have messaged people at those times, but I was not with anybody at those okay. times. He could have been with you on the Halloween party. He did not want to go. It was a bunch of little kids. And on November the 30th of 2021 at 12.51 p.m., you could have been with him. I could have, yes. And you didn't? No. Nope. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank um, you. Mrs. Crumbly, I just have two, two areas of uh, questions for you. Um, Mr. Keyes played some recordings. Who were you on the phone with in those recordings? And my dad. Okay, so you asked a couple of questions about calories, and then what was the other one? Um, the, I guess the, the child tax credit. Okay. How often did you speak with your dad? Um, during the summer, it was every day. Um, they went back to work. It was just on the weekends. They both are both teachers. And how many t how many hours a day did you spend? Do you spend with other people? It, sometimes it's none. Um, sometimes it's when they walk by my cell, I'll talk to them. But I'm, I'm locked down 23 hours a day. I get one hour out by myself. Um, I talk to my clergy lady um, weekly, so I see her. Um, sometimes I talk to the church priest, or I'll talk to my attorney, but it's about the most human contact I get. So I, I guess one of my questions is when you do talk to people, you talk about, are there more conversations than just those? Right, there are. Okay. And then um, that night on um, December 3rd, going into the 4th, um, after 11... There was one phone being used, is that right? Correct. Whose phone was being used? It was it was my burner phone. Who was using the phone? Uh, my husband was using the phone. Okay, were you also using it? Um, no, I was using my other phone. So he started using my burning phone, burner phone. I used the one with our regular phone number to do anything on. Okay, so these messages are from the burner phone. Correct. To myself and Mario. Correct. So the ones at after 11 o'clock, so at 11, 17, or whenever these texts came in, what were you doing? When I saw the video of my husband going to the car and having a cigarette, I knew I was probably sleeping at that time because I did not let, like us not being together after what happened to us on the 30th when the police came to our house. So if he went out to have a cigarette, it was most without me, it was most likely because I was asleep. Okay. When, you, when guns were in your face and we saw that on the video, before that, had you been asleep? Yes. Are you absolutely sure about that? I'm positive. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you.